Hi everybody and welcome to Carly's Craft Corner. My name is Carly, I'm the instructional coordinator here at Los Sucedos Historic Site. And I am the only person working today. I am completely alone on 148 acres. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off my mask so you can understand me. Today we are going to do some arts and crafts that are all winter themed, New Mexico tradition inspired. Um, and so we are going to use materials that you hopefully can just find around your house, around your backyard, um, and then maybe some special crafts that you might need some supplies for. So I hope you'll join me and have a lot of fun together. Thank you. So when you gather sticks, you want to make sure that they are thin enough so that they're easy to break or cut. I've broken your pieces of sticks. You can now lay them to form the cabin. Now you might be wondering how this relates to New Mexico's traditions. Well, in 1862, the Homestead Act was passed in the United States, and people were allowed to come out onto a plot of land that is 160 acres large and they had to live on it for five years and make improvements. What that means is they had to build things like cabins in order to keep that land. This was happening very near to us at Los Suceros, right on the Pajarito Plateau. And since I'm an archeologist, I actually was able to excavate one. So I left a little space here for the door. And the door, if you have a different color stick or a piece of bark, just put that right in there. And then for the roof, you can use another piece of bark, like this, or more sticks. Or if you have foil, you can make some tin roofs for the top. going to make is trees in the background. So using those same sticks, you can break off pieces of different lengths. So that will be the base of the tree, but then we need all sorts of arms to make it look real. And remember, in the winter, in most places, the trees don't have any leaves. So we're going to leave them just like this as sticks. we go we have a little scene so you can always get more creative with this you can find things around your house like cotton swabs that you can make into snow if you have you know some little packaging material that would be good snow or even things like bubble wrap to be the snow and so once you have all of this done like this the easiest way is you can always use glue to glue it to your piece of paper you could use tape. But what I like to do is I like to design the picture and then take a photograph of this. And that way you can reuse the sticks, put them back in nature, you know, recycle any of the stuff you can, and you will have this forever in your photograph. one will be using clay or sticks. If you don't have clay, you can just use um, something else to that a stick. You can make dough, like I will show you at the end of this video, we will be making some dough ornaments. You can use that same dough for this as well. Um, or you could use pretzels instead of sticks and icing instead of the clay. So the first thing you wanna do is you want to form a good foundation. And I want this to be square or rectangular, just like a real cabin. You want to make sure that it is the same size as your sticks, or close to that at least. And it doesn't have to be perfect because this will be on the bottom and you won't be able to see it. So 
this way, you just take your sticks, you put two there, and you want to make another layer going this way. In order to do that, I'm gonna take a little piece of clay, and I'm gonna put a little piece on every corner. Then you get more sticks and you stick them into that clay. The clay is acting like a piece of adobe or mud that would hold these in place. And then you keep doing that, alternating which sides until you build the whole thing. Then I'm going to use foil like earlier and fold it like a fan for the roof. Have our little cabin. I used a piece of foil to be a door and then put some little sticks there to act as trees. And then you just take a picture of this and you print out the picture and there's your artwork. We are just going to draw an adobe house and show you some um, decorations that you can do for the holidays in typical New Mexican style. So the house we will be drawing today is actually based off of Maria Chabot's house. At Los Luceros. And so we're going to make this really easy for you. And we're going to add some cool perspective in there too. So the first thing you want to do is you want to draw a square. Now adobe is typically rounded because of the mud. So if you can try and round out the square a little bit. There we go. And it doesn't have to be perfect because you can always erase and redo things with marker, all that kind of stuff. And then in the back, we're gonna draw a rectangle. And so this is gonna be the other part of the house. And again, a little rounded. So to add some perspective, you are going to connect this corner to this corner and this to this. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, um, and it's a little uh, imperfect there, so I'm gonna go ahead and redo that. And remember that making mistakes is totally fine. That's why we have such things as erasers. And you can also, if you really want to, you can use a straight edge to draw that line more precisely. It's totally up to you. So now we have a 3D thing going on here. Now Maria Chabot's house has another little adobe half wall here. So from here, we're gonna draw a line out, down, out and down. It's like a little half wall there. We're gonna erase the lines that are in between. Here we go. And then this wall continues on over here. And so it's very helpful with drawings like this if you uh, draw really lightly so that it's easier to erase if you need to. There's the other part. Now with her house, we have probably, let's see, one, two, three, four, four fireplaces. And so fireplaces need a place for the smoke to escape. So we're gonna add that right on the roof there. That's just gonna be the fireplace. And of course we can't forget windows and doors. So the door is right here. You're gonna draw another rectangle. There we go. And there's a nice big window right here. and a nice window right here. So you're just gonna draw these easy shapes. Awesome. So here we have the basis of Maria's house. Now you can add in plants and trees to your liking. It doesn't have to be realistic if you just wanna get fancy with it. But in real life, she has a juniper right here 
And so we're gonna just do this. And I'm not gonna get too realistic here. I'm just gonna draw a little bit of a bushiness to the tree, maybe add in some sticks. But you can get as detailed or creative as you want. And then again, I'm just gonna add this little bush here just to give it some nice details and maybe a nice tree in the back. And this I'm just gonna do really quickly, do some creepy looking sticks because it's winter and all the leaves have fallen off. Really easy here. And again, you can take as much time as you want to on this and make things look nicer than this. There we go. And actually this tree is a little bit farther back, so we're gonna do that. Now once you have your base shape here, this is when you get creative. You can color with markers, with crayons, or you can use mixed media. So to make this more winterized, we want to add some New Mexico decorations. So for instance, people often have ristras hanging from the door. So we're going to just draw some little squiggles that'll look like chili peppers hanging from a ristra. Easy peasy. And then we're going to add some ferrolitos. So one way to do that is, of course, you can just draw little ferrolitos on top. Or if you want to get really creative, you can use a paper bag or something that is that color and actually cut out shapes to put along the roof to really look like that. And then I want to put in a Christmas tree in the window because that's always pretty. And you could just do a basic thing here. You could even print out a picture of a tree and glue it on there. Again, if you want it to be mixed media. And you don't want to forget the window sills. So that's why we draw lightly, because you can draw right over it. And then just erase the stuff in the sills. Or you can just color this in on top. And of course the tree needs some ornaments and the like. So that's basically it, really basic. And if you want to, if you're happy with your drawing, um, you could go back with a marker and keep in mind this is permanent marker. So I would definitely get your parents permission to do that. Um, and that way it stands out a little bit more and you can really ref perfect your lines and stuff if you were interested in that. And that is it. So one thing to remember with perspective is the further away things are, the smaller they are. So if you really want to add that perspective in there, see the closest stone is biggest and they get really small towards the door. So I'm doing the same thing here with the Farrelly dose. I'm cutting them out to be smaller in the background than they are in the foreground. And if you ever have been to Lights of Los Luceros or um, the Luminarias at Jemez or anywhere in the state, you would know that they also put bags of candles, luminarias or ferrolitos, on the little walls too. So we can always add some to be there and there. And of course, of course you want to glue these down. You can keep going, add more details, add color, color it in, scan it in, and color it with the computer, all kinds of stuff. So Adobe, of course, is um, mud and clay mixed together, and so you can add some little dots to, you know, make it look more, uh, more mud-like. Remember to glue these guys down. You could add some yellow to look like flame coming out of the bags, all kinds of stuff. So this is just really basic, and you can take it to the furthest extent. Good work, everybody.
to be making now is tin like ornaments out of foil. And so this type of artwork is really popular in New Mexico and can be found with all types of styles. Um, and so this is what we're kind of modeling it on. And so you want to get a piece of cardboard or something thicker. This is just from an old cereal box. Um, and then what I'm going to do first, you can ignore this, is I'm going to get my piece of foil and I'm going to glue it on this piece of cardboard. And you can use craft glue or tacky glue, whatever you have around. I have my foil glued onto that piece of cardboard. And there's a couple, couple options here. So if you want to make an ornament, you can take any household object and trace around it gently with a pencil or a marker and then cut it out. Or if you want to do a picture frame, you can just cut out a, a rectangle or square in the middle and then we will be decorating the outside of the frame. For this example, I'm just going to do an ornament to show you the technique. So I'm going to take my little candle here, trace around it and then cut it out. Remember to have parent permission. Okay, so now I have the basics of my uh, ornament here. And so I happen to have this pretty nifty tool that's used for clay making, but you can choose anything that you want that has, you know, a point to it or a nice metal tip. So you could even use this pencil, but get rid of the lead so you're not marking and just use the tip like this. So with this, basically you can do anything you want, any kinds of shapes. I'm gonna take some inspiration from this guy and maybe do the same pattern on the whole thing. And so I am going to use the small end and you just press onto this pretty deeply and you can see that you are making a mark in the foil. And you wanna wait for your glue to dry before you do this. Otherwise, you're just moving the glue around like I am right now. You can do your initials, you can do anything you want on this. And then it looks like there's little circles each of these. And there we go. Really easy. The next thing is if you have a hole punch, you can punch a hole somewhere in your ornament and then hang it by a string. And that's it. All right, so for this craft, um, the original recipe calls for four cups of flour, a cup of salt, one and a half cups of warm water, and of course you want parent permission and assistance using the oven to bake these in. So I am cutting down our, our recipe way, way, way smaller, so that I'm just showing you an example. Basically, you get all of your materials into this bowl. I'm gonna start with my flour and my salt. And I need one more tablespoon of salt. And then I'm gonna put the water in there and start mixing with my hands. This is when you can start to get messy. Once you have your dough formed into this ball, you want to knead it for at least 10 minutes. So you're just gonna play it like this. You can use your fists and punch it down. It's really just to make sure all of this is mixed up and there's no bumps. So have fun with it. So I got a baking sheet with some foil on here and my dough is all ready to go. Now you can use an actual um, roller if you want or we could just grab whatever we have lying around. In this case I have our glue that we used earlier and so I can just roll it out like this and get it to the desired thickness. Now one thing you can do with this is, well one, you have to make sure you do not eat it. This is not for eating and the flour and salt can make you very sick. So make sure you're not sneaking bites here. But one thing you can do is you can roll it out flat and then use your handprint and make a handprint indentation in there. But I wanted to do something a little bit more New Mexico specific. 
So I have some New Mexico cutters here that I'm going to use. And I'm just gonna press them into the dough. There we go. Let's get a little chili pepper in there. But you can use whatever you have. If you have cookie cutters, great. If not, you can use other objects to cut pieces out like this. You can say it's a little thick, so if you want it thinner, you can always roll it thinner. Take your pieces and use something to poke a hole in it so that it could be strung up for an ornament. You can use a straw or I have the same tool that I used last time and I'm just gonna poke a hole in it and make sure it's pretty big in case the dough expands at all. And do that for each of the pieces. So you're gonna have an adult preheat the oven to 250 degrees. Then you're gonna put these in there once the oven is preheated for one to two hours. And so it's gonna take a long time, but once they start to look flat and dry, flip them over and they'll bake on the other side. This is a good reminder to make sure that your holes go all the way through both sides. So see you in two hours. All right, everybody, now these are my finished ornaments super easy they're really hard and sturdy and then I just took some paint and I painted them then I'm going to string them up and put them on the tree good work everybody thank you so much for watching Carly's craft corner